Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and let's get this party started. I just helped my sister move a couch that she needed to at her house and so I would have had this video out earlier. I had it all ready to go, but I had my sister and my mom was here and then they uh, I had to take them to uh, deal with the couch issue. So here we are. Now we're going to talk about gold. Russia will implement the, now this is in Russian and so I, I don't know what they're saying, but I'm just taking this guy's word for it because I've seen this, I've seen many tweets about this. Russia will implement the gold standard. PM advises foreign businesses that competitors will take their place, Russia, to return to the gold standards. The government, the government will ab abolish the VAT tax on bullion. This bill will go to the State Duma on March 4th going forward. <clears throat> when purchasing gold bars or other precious metals from a bank, the 20% current tax on top of its value will not apply. This is a way to ensure people can invest securely in something other than the dollar. Usually people hold their cash in dollars and as the ruble is volatile. Folks, I, I'm assuming that this is what we're seeing here and this is true, but isn't this where we all knew this this disaster of money printing and going into debt? Didn't we know that the dollar would eventually go to the graveyard because of all that these irresponsible politicians and bureaucrats have done to our money? So it wouldn't. I wouldn't. Of course, Russia is going to do something like this. This is how the dollar ends up in the dumpster, folks. Now, this is also why why I talk about glint. Okay. This is what I'm doing now, okay? I opened a Glint account because it let, you can do one of two things. You can either get physical delivery of gold. I'm, I'm going to do both, right? And so far, I've just set up my account. But what th what's so cool about this is that I'm going to be buying, I'm buying, I already have, I'm buying gold with my Glint account, and then I, I ordered one of their MasterCard debit cards. And so then I can spend my gold. Literally, I can go to a Mexican restaurant to have my margaritas I love. I can buy the margarita and the chips and cheese dip with my with my Glint card, and it physically itemizes how many grams of gold that I've spent. Or if I choose to, I can, choose, I can go into my account and I can choose to do the same with U.S. dollars if that's what I want to do. This is the ultimate insurance, in my opinion, because now... If things really hit the fan, all I have to do is go into my Glenn account and choose, okay, I'm going to spend gold now because the dollar is in the dumpster. So now I'm going to spend gold with my card. And my purchasing power is, is in good standing while the next guy that's paying next to me in his U.S. dollars, he's in the dumpster. Get it? Got it? Glint. I'm going to put the link to this Glint. It's a Glint pad. I'm going to put the link to this in the top of this description. In my opinion, people are crazy if they don't have, well, this is what I have. XRP, XLM, gold, and silver too. I'm hoping maybe they'll add silver to the Glint. Who, who knows? I don't know. All right. Now, I got blocked by Jim Rickards, who is the ultimate gold bug. I got blocked by him yesterday, and I don't understand why, because I'm his biggest fan. Jim Rickards, who I think is one of the smartest guys in finance, blocked me because I guess because I showed a clip of his Ice Nine video yesterday, um, and then I guess I'm assuming he he didn't want that to be shown. I don't know. So if any if Jim Rickards is listening, please unblock me. I did not. I was not trying to. In fact, all I did was talk about how smart you were in the video. Um, so. Uh, but I did, this is the clip of the video that, that I wanted to show you that I didn't show you yesterday. It's at about the 6.30 mark. This is the video, I guess, I'm assuming offended him that I showed it. Television uh, sound. He uh, gave me a nice gift when we parted ways, a blue Swedish vase. I keep it in my writing studio at my home in Connecticut. But my point is I came away from all three meetings convinced of one thing. When the next crisis hits, the elites are planning to freeze the financial system and they'll replace it with a new system, one not based on the U.S. dollar. 
When that happens, we'll wake up to a very strange and disturbing new reality. And, and for our viewers that are watching today, what might their reality look like that morning? How does this manifest? First, they'll have gone to bed knowing that a massive financial crisis was underway. But when they wake up, they'll find it has worsened and the contagion has spread worldwide. When they go to withdraw money, their ATM will say, close temporarily. When they go to sell stocks, their account will say, transaction not available. When they go to their local business, that business will only accept cash if it's open. As citizens realize they're being barred from their money, riots will erupt. It's going to get really bad really but, quickly. But how would such a freeze actually work? And, and wouldn't that be highly illegal? Well, it wouldn't be illegal. Okay, I just wanted you to see that part. And, and th then I want to show you this because somebody replied. This person uh, who I don't follow, now I do. They, they replied with, a, with something I showed years ago, maybe one or two years ago on this channel. There was a lot of people showing this. And this is Jim Rickards, and he's at this little round table, and I'll show you where it is here in a second. Let me do the refresh button, because I want you to hear this clip of Jim Rickards. Bolt on a pallet, fly it in a plane to the other guy, and he puts it in his vault, end of story. And, and, you know, Steve knows better than anyone, when you do things on net instead of gross, it's a much smaller transaction. If you had to pay for everything with gross gold, that's unwieldy. But if you, if you keep score in crypto and then settle up on net, uh, you know, every six months or so, that works fine. Now, notice everything I just said, there's no dollar. And that was Doug's point. Are we looking at the dethroning of the dollar? If we've got gold, Putin's uh, crypto, Xi crypto, um, a distributed ledger, and a large trading network. That That's right. Not involve dollars, does not involve SWIFT. Is that the beginning of the end of the dollar? And it might be. Did you hear what he, he said? He said Putin's crypto, Xi's crypto, and then a digital ledger, okay? Remember when, when David Schwartz described how it would work when the CBDCs are being built on the XRP ledger? He, he, the way I remember him saying it, he, he was saying, okay, you got these walled gardens, and then the wall comes down, and then they use XRP as a bridge to go to the, from. So I picked the way I picture this is the Chinese dig, their crypto, the wall comes down, the digital yuan, then it goes through XRP as a bridge to Russia, then the wall, their wall comes down, and it goes into the digi, digital ruble, ruby, whatever their currency is, uh, ruble. Um, and so that's how XRP could be a bridge. That's how you could create some type of a compromise, a shared world reserve currency the way um, yesterday, um, what's his face? Um, uh, Jerome Powell said something to the effect that there could be many world cur reserve currencies or something like that. Okay, um, so there's that. Now, this is where he was, he was speaking in that little video clip. So it's the Modern Wall Street Roundtable live at Delmonico's featuring Jim Rickards. So I went and found another clip from that same exchange. This is from uh, September 20th, 2018. There are some cryptos that are working with regulators and are working with... I agree. Ripple right. would be an example. Ripple like, would sorry. be an example, yeah. right. Now this is a, and I can, I can imagine in the next five years, instead of us doing sterling against the dollar or sterling against yen and doing these kinds of transactions, we'll do sterling versus ripple. And the reason being dollar right now is a two day settlement, with something like ripple you could do settlement in seconds. And I think that there's a future there where the guy that's trading spot FX today will be trading spot FX against ripple in the future, in the next two or three years. See him nodding so I think that Ripple yes. has a great future because it's right now supported by all the banks and by all the regulators. Let's go back. Watch, Sterling versus watch, Ripple. While, he's, while this guy's talking about Ripple, look at Jim Rickard's head. He's not, he's not shaking his head no and rolling his eyes. Watch his head. And the reason being, dollar right now is a two-day settlement. With something like Ripple, you could do settlement in seconds. And I think that there's a future there where the guy that's trading spot FX today will be trading spot FX against Ripple in the future, in the next two or three years. So I think that Ripple has a great future because it's right now supported by all the banks and by all the regulators. And it has no last Now it's important, Jim Rickards is, no, is not shy about telling you if he thinks you're wrong. And he did not correct that guy in that clip, okay? Now... There's also another clip of Jim Rickards that's worthy of hearing about XLM. Merchant acquirer accepts your MasterCard, then they got to hand it over to the local bank. That bank has to send it to a correspondent bank in Sydney, Australia. The bank in Sydney, Australia has got to run it through the Visa network. Then they got to get paid. Then they got to send it back to this little bank. You know, so think of all the steps, all the costs, etc. 
what if you could replace that with a blockchain? They are doing this, by the way. This is a real pilot We're using the Lumen token. Well, IBM has built this. Lumen is the token of choice. It's working extremely well. And those value is moving around without going through this clunky central bank network and correspondent bank network that I just described. It's cheaper. That means, you know, people can either lower prices or offer more services. And it's also big on remittances. You know, a lot of commercial right. prior. So he's aware of both Ripple and XLM. And then there's this. Rob Licker sent me this. Apparently, Gary Gensler was on with John Stewart. Okay. I watched the whole thing. This clip is the best. And I think Stefan Huber um, has. He pointed out my first thought when I watched this clip. Let's play the, the clip and then I'll tell you. To litigate. This, this agency has to be willing to go into court mm -hmm. and, you know, take some losses from time to time. But go into court. Right. I think all of those things. But it's trying to use high profile cases to bring folks back on the right side of the line. <laughs> to litigate. This, this agency has to be willing to go to into court mm -hmm. and, you know, take some losses. Take from some losses from time to time. Now, I'm going, somebody in the, please, somebody that's listening to my voice, because I don't know if we can find this clip. It might be tough to find, but somebody can find it. Somebody knows exactly where it is. We need the clip of Gary Gensler because Stefan Huber is right. He says, what, wh wh where's this video from the fall of last year? Gary, the fall of last year, Gary was still trumpeting. We haven't lost a case yet. I remember him saying this, folks. This was said. Please help me find that video because we need to put we need to put what he just said at the end of this year. We need to put him saying they've never lost a case at the beginning of the year. That needs to be one video that we can put out because he did say it, and I don't remember where he said it. Usually these things are delivered up, but that was a just one of those random clips that, that was not at the time as significant to me. But he did say it. We need that because if why would he be saying now that sometimes they're, they're going to lose these cases when he was bragging about how they had never lost last year? So let's find that. Somebody help me out. Now, I did a whistleblower alert on this video, and here's why. Watch what he said. At the beginning, you're going to see something else he said in that interview and what I tacked on. Limit on the amount that a person could invest in Ethereum. Um, a, a person can can buy uh, from any number of different identities. We may limit the size, the, the unit size of a sale, um, just to um, make it easier to disguise. Um, you, let's say if you're a whale and you want some privacy, um, you can buy. Um, 50,000 units and just, just uh, um, so, so nobody scares people with uh, the enormous initial purchase. I think you get the point, folks. Uh, <laughs> so I did a whistleblower alert, copied John Stewart in, copied Chuck Grassley in because he was mentioned by Gary Gensler there. And then, of course, there's this. And remember, it's not just disguised whales. We know three things. We know from the videos I've shown, uh, we've, it's their own words. We know that JP Morgan was involved with Ethereum. They, they were there before it launched. We know that Goldman Sachs developers were working on the Ethereum project because Charles Hoskinson said it before it was launched. And we know that Andreessen and Horowitz was there. They were meeting with Andreessen and Horowitz before it was launched. Okay. We've got the video. We've seen it. Okay. We know that. And the other thing we know is that Ethereum has never been audited. They've never looked at who bought during that pre-sale, that ICO. Nobody knows. Under a commercial agreement, we will be supporting JP Morgan's interbank information network, the IIM, and JPM coin network. Um, so we will be bringing a much more comprehensive enterprise Ethereum solution to not just JP Morgan and the hundreds of financial institutions on their networks, but the additional hundreds of institutions around the world that make use of enterprise Ethereum and that are increasingly um, starting to make use of public mainnet Ethereum. Ooh, so there's two things there for me. Obviously, as you've hinted, the 
network of payment technology that JP Morgan had already created that you're, I assume, going to help develop. But I think there will be people watching this going, hang on a second, is this a traditional bank like JP Morgan perhaps stepping away from crypto, stepping away from blockchain technology and handing it over to, to one of the experts? Is that this or are they as dedicated as ever? Well, uh, it's not my role to speak um, directly for JP Morgan, but I can confirm that uh, this step indicates that JP Morgan is doubling down on the Ethereum <laughs> technology. Okay. They, they are uh, their uh, blockchain and, and Ethereum focused team, but they're growing it in the direction of building applications on the Yes, and that would be the same Julia Chatterley who had Brad Garlinghouse on, on her show all the time up until this SEC versus Ripple debacle started to unfold. Once once it's the, the Ethereum free pass became an issue, she's never covered it since. We've kicked, screamed, begged, and everything, and she won't cover it. And so you have to wonder what's going on over there. Now, um, Stefan Huber. Holy, listen, Ethereum is a matter of U.S. national security. The Ethereum Foundation has entered a long-standing partnership with the Russian government and Russian banks to press ahead with a digital forward agenda under the orders of Russian President Vladimir Putin. And this is a whole article. He's even got the highlights in here of when this deal was signed. Then there's this. Remember, none of them, none of the Ethereum people, none of it has ever been audited. And here's Vitalik Buterin. You know, since the rip, one of the tactics used by the SEC when they sued Brad Garlinghouse and Ripple, well, the first thing they wanted to do is they tried to highlight, oh, Brad Garlinghouse dumped his share, his XRP, while he was saying that he um, was was long XRP and all this. Well, listen to Vitalik Buterin. Listen to what he did. But you didn't short it, did you? So. The I, mean, I did can get and uh, get the Ethereum Foundation to sell about uh, seventy thousand ETH, like basically at the top, and that's doubled our runway now. So, like the, and it was one good decision that had a lot and that had a lot of impact, but you know, it did not short. Well, wouldn't, you it, didn't... wouldn't it be interesting to see what all of them were saying? What he was saying around the time that he instructed the Ethereum Foundation to dump seventy thousand. ETH tokens. What was he saying back then? Why is nobody looking into that? Okay, um, I got this out of order, but the, the the official cool guy of the Digital Asset Investor channel had sent me something, and then I got everything out of order. I think maybe he sent me the the uh, this like the clip about um, Russia implementing a gold standard, and so I just can't remember. But just do remember this: he is the official cool guy of the Digital Asset Investor channel. And that wasn't something that was just handed out. I mean, this guy had to look really cool at the time for me to give out a title like that. Um, oh, and he's earned it. Okay, wanted to rem remind everybody of something you may not remember. ProCoinNews.com, who is the official um, sponsor of the Digital Asset Investor Hunting and Fishing Club, um, they are giving away one of their ProCoin News hats. This is a picture I took when I was actually in my deer stand at the hunt, Hunting and Fishing Club. And uh, they are giving away one of these hats. So if you go to ProCoinNews.com, click on that link, you can come down here and it'll show you how you can um, enter to win the, win the uh, hat. I wear my hat every time I go to the Hunting and Fishing Club. I will be doing some fishing videos soon where... We, we will, uh, I'll, I'll catch a monster bass maybe, and I'll say, this is sponsored by ProCoinNews.com, the official sponsor of the Digital Asset Investor Hunting and Fishing Club. I'm a digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, tell your friends and family that I do wear a camouflaged ProCoinNews.com hat.